Okay, so without much ado, I'll get to the topic straight. You know what I'm going to teach you right here, and we'll continue the grammar. And so let's start. As in, first of all, let's do the difference between which and that. They are relative pronouns, as in the way we use for humans, who and whom, and whose. We use which and that, and whose or of which for uh, these uh, non-living things or otherwise aspects. Now remember the difference between which and that is that which you use for something additional. And what is additional? An additional thing is that which even if you remove will not hamper the meaning of the given thing and vice versa for that. If you remove the that part, you actually hamper the meaning and the actual thought is not conveyed. You miss out on a part and that can harm the meaning. Uh, remember the which thing is always included in commas, whereas uh, that thing is there by itself. You do not have to have commas before or afterward. Suppose you have two friends. Ken and Ben, and both have two types of goods in their houses. Ken has only one type of gold, as in this uh, gold belongs to Delhi, and uh, Ben has two types, Delhi and Mumbai golds. So, in this case, suppose both have had thefts in their houses, and uh, from Ken's house, of course, there was only one kind of gold, so that was stolen. Uh, in Ben's house. There were two types of golds. So one was stolen, as in the Delhi gold was stolen, but the Mumbai gold was uh, safe. Now, if Ken had to convey to his father the uh, state of affairs, he does not need to uh, mention the Delhi point because his father knows that there's only one kind of gold. But still, if you have to have the redundancy, you can uh, you know, put it forth by using commas and by using which. So the gold which you bought in Delhi has been stolen. Now that Delhi part is additional. Even if I remove it, the gold has been stolen. His father can understand that uh, there was only one kind of gold and that has been uh, stolen. But let's see Ben's case. In Ben's case, there were two types of golds, Delhi and Mumbai golds. So, you, you know, here, if you see, um, there's only one kind of gold that has been stolen and the Mumbai one is safe. So in order to convey the complete scenario, Ben has to mention the Delhi point so that his father comes to know that the Mumbai part is safe. So the gold that you bought in Delhi has been stolen. Why? Because here, if he conveys this thought, then his father will come to know that he doesn't have to worry about the Mumbai one because that is safe. The Delhi part is important here. Then comma no comma for humans also. Remember the same uh, cases here. If you have something that uh, is worth mentioning, then you should not put any commas as was the case with that. But if, it, if something is additional, if something is not required, is just there because of the sake of it, maybe for the sake of it, then uh, it should be you know, accompanied by commas before and after. So suppose I have only one brother who is a doctor. So here I do not need to mention the profession. So my brother who is a doctor is here. But suppose I have two, two, friends, uh, two brothers, one is a doctor and the other one is an engineer. Now I have to specify which uh, brother I'm talking about. So my brother who is a doctor is here. I will not put commas here in order to specify the brother I'm referring to. Then this comparative adjectives thing. As in you know that there are certain ways we can make uh, comparatives uh, by uh, hard, harder, hard, hard, harder, hardest, harder, ER, beautiful, more beautiful. So there are certain ways where uh, we actually you know, make comparative adjectives and uh, certain adjectives are there that already have a more plus positive degree uh, format to have their comparatives, but uh, certain are there that are actually converted into uh, comparative adjectives using these suffixes R or ER. Now, more thing is, okay, you do not have to worry about that uh, in regard to this slide, but uh, certain adjectives that have R or ER when we use them in a certain context, they even change to something more plus positive and why and how they change and uh, why we, you know, in what cases we have to consider the more plus positive degree thing and ignore the RER thing is something I'm going to teach you right now. So uh, let's take the first case when you have one quality and on the basis of that quality you are comparing two persons, Ben and Ken again. So if you have to say that the degree of smartness in Ben is greater than the degree of smartness in Ken, you will say Ben is smarter than Ken because here the quality uh, smart is smartness, sorry, is standalone and you're comparing two people on the basis of that. So Ben is smarter than Ken. 
but suppose we are talking about one person and we are comparing two qualities in him in that case of course you you know if you see the comparative form of smart is smarter but in this case since we have only one person and we are comparing two qualities of him we will not use the uh, er form of smart in the comparative thing we will use actually more plus positive adjective that is more smart so ben is more smart than handsome some miscellaneous points which we make mistakes in uh normally i've seen that people write she demands for a car or she demands of a car nothing of that sort she demands a car that's all uh again the general case scenario is that uh, the classes begin from monday no the classes begin on monday and this is something um, when you refer to a person's uh, uh, offspring from a previous marriage sara is saf's daughter by his first wife sara is saf's daughter by not uh, any other preposition fine so if you like this video give it a like and share it with someone who needs it thank you